My view of DeSantis is that he is driven and motivated by pragmatism, that he's not philosophically uh, dedicated to any particular cause, that he leans conservative by upbringing, but that's about it, um, and that he has looked to follow the path that will best get him, in his view, to political power. So, you know, he, he goes to the Ivy League, Yale, uh, Harvard Law, while at Yale, he joins the fraternity that is aligned with the with Skull and Bones, he uh, the Bush family had been members of, uh, captain of the baseball team. In between Yale and Harvard, he goes to teach at an elite prep school in North Georgia. That, by the way, is where the rumors of partying with uh, 16 and 17 year old girls comes from. Uh, there's photos that are circulating around, etc. That's where that's where Trump's poking him on. Uh, this comes from a New York Times article a few years ago. I guarantee you there's probably some stories there uh, that they're going to sit on and wait to and see if DeSantis gets nominated, and then they'll unleash him. Um, so we'll see You know whether the stories are true or not. Different different matter, but how often does that always matter? But, the, uh, but uh, it then goes right away into the military and is quickly assigned to Guantanamo. So not, not a usual place to get assigned. Then assigned to Fallujah to, uh, to consult the Navy SEALs there. Research Fallujah a little bit, and you'll see the kind of problems that were occurring in Fallujah. Then he gets a U.S. attorney's gig for the Middle District of Florida, where he's given assignments to handle child porn cases and immigration cases concerning Russians. Uh, what that, and then all of a sudden he runs for Congress without, I think, ever working in the private sector in his life. <laughs> so has the career path of a politician. Story was all the way back in high school he had ambitions to be president. He has, has pursued the path of a politician, uh, but he's usually chosen the pragmatic path. You know, he, and he, but he does show evidence of being a deep state recruit, not necessarily deep state capture. Then he runs for Congress. First person to endorse him is uh, John Bolton. <laughs> so give you an idea what's going on there, right? And as he's in Congress... Uh, he looks around and who, what's the best way to rise in Congress? Well, he's got a safe Republican seat, and let's say he just wants to stay in the House forever and build up a big power base within the House. Well, that would be Paul Ryan and the neocons. So who does he align with? Paul Ryan and the neocons. Gets him si assigned a prime gig on the National Security Committee that you only get, subcommittee, you only get if you're deep state aligned and deep state backed. You know, supports the Maidan coup, supports almost everything. Also, what makes the most sense if you have national political ambitions in the early 90s in the Republican Party, if you're someone like DeSantis, it's align yourself with the Bush family. That's what he does. Not only from his fraternity days at Yale, but he continues to promote them as the greatest family, greatest political heroes of all time, both George W. Bush and Poppy Bush, and is not bashful about that. Smart politics, being in Florida, Jeb Bush aligned there too. Again, if your goal is power, if your goal is success, he's aligning himself with the people who get him there. He then decides to take a shot at the governorship when Scott decides to run for the Senate, 2018. And here again, his pragmatism directs him because he surprised a lot of his more institutional establishment backers by how he chose to campaign in the primaries. And this is the first time he pops up on the national stage. He decides to align himself with Trump. He was in a difficult primary. He was behind. He wasn't doing well. And he figures out, okay, you know, again, using pragmatism as your filter, what would a pragmatist do? Pragmatist would figure out how would I win the primary? How's the best way to win a Florida primary in 2018, the Republican Party? Align yourself with Donald Trump. Maybe do so comedically and mimetically. And that's exactly what DeSantis does. He helps his kids build a wall. Build a wall. That helps break through, gets Trump's attention. Trump endorses him, puts him over the top, and then he sneaks out an uh, electoral victory in the general election. Uh, he ran behind Rick Scott, by the way, for the Senate that year. And that was a little bit of a sign that, you know, in closely contested races, that's the only one DeSantis ever had, he hasn't exactly overwhelmed in his campaign tactical skills. His instincts haven't shown to be strategically brilliant. He's shown to be a pragmatist who occasionally surrounds himself with smart political people that put him on a populist path because of, I think, his pragmatism and the quality of the advice his advisors give him. 
and I think because of his working class origins in Florida from an uh, Italian and other immigrant families from the Northeast and the Midwest, I think he has some, some populist grounding. Now it's counterbalanced by a lot of Jesuit Catholic ties. You can ask Mark Robert about some of that. Uh, there's a lot of establishment ties on that side of the aisle. So, by the way, while he was being recruited by the deep state clearly for political office, to give you an idea of how aggressive that effort was, his sister somehow ends up in London engaged to a banker uh, with deep ties to the bank that is the, deep, that is the royal family's bank. Gives you an idea for how aggressive that effort, that solicitous effort was. DeSantis gets elected governor, and to be honest, for the first year and a half or so, he's kind of a bore. Nothing of any great consequence or significance shows up. Clears up the election issues in Broward County. That's kind of about it. So the, uh, the, the pandemic comes along, and his initial response is worse than Trump's, to be honest. He eagerly embraces lockdowns. Uh, brags about it months after, months into the process, about how many lives he saved by the harshness of his lockdowns. When the vaccines initially roll out, uh, he promotes them heavy, uh, buys up, used ta Florida taxpayer dollars to buy a bunch, promotes an event to get injected in a bunch of old folks, says people should go out and take it. Uh, and uh, on both lockdowns and the vaccine issues, he mostly tracks Trump until Trump is out of office. And uh, the, he only backs down from lockdowns as there is political rebellion in the court of public opinion. And then he savvily, he, you know, savvily and smartly resists the institutional and establishment media pressure. What he has shown is a willingness to buck institutional liberal media. Uh, that's where he's been strong and followed whatever his pragmatic instincts led him to believe would give him the best success. Second, I do think he has some reflexive populist understanding out there and his willingness to critique the World Economic Forum, Anthony Fauci, Big Pharma, at various stages in the pandemic, proves some bona fides on that interpretation of him, but fundamentally a pragmatist. The, uh, so then uh, rolls around, uh, he, he takes bold stands against the vaccine, ultimately puts in a great surgeon general, uh, opens up a grand jury into the criminality of the, or potential criminality of the, of the Big Pharma, in promotion of the vaccines, uh, does some you know high-profile battles against wokeism and against uh, uh, soft on crime prosecutors, all of which is popular in the state of Florida. Florida continues to shift right as its migratory patterns and generational profiles fit the demographics that are moving right, including amongst the Cuban and Venezuelan voter groups, uh, more so than the rest of the country. As Trump likes to note, he got a million more votes than Vincentis ever has in the state of Florida. It's true. And so uh, the so that's what's you know taken place, and it looked like DeSantis was going to align with Trump and campaign on the ticket with Trump until uh, August of 2022. What happens in August? And August is when they uh, I believe it's August is when they raid Mar-a-Lago, and the and that's when uh, DeSantis is tipped off about it, says nothing, doesn't protest it, doesn't contest it, doesn't try to challenge the authority of what's taking place, uh, says very little about it publicly. And all of a sudden, Trump starts getting word that DeSantis is going to challenge him. I thought that this was a deep state plot to put the two against each other, but was not going to come to fruition because I thought DeSantis was politically smart enough uh, for his pragmatism to keep him from conflicting in, uh, with Trump because DeSantis' best path forward is alignment with Trump. You can just do the math on that and figure that out pretty obviously. But it uh, turns out Trump was right. Whoever tipped him off was correct. Uh, DeSantis had, in fact, decided to explore challenging Trump. And what I'd heard over the weekend, as you guys got in the Barnes Brief earlier this week and discussed on the Alex Jones Show, uh, the word I got was that what the backstory, the inside story, was that uh, DeSantis had been told uh, before the Mar-a-Lago raid that there would be a sequence uh, of criminal investigations against Trump, number one. Number two, that that would derail Trump's presidential ambitions, opening the door for DeSantis. So that third, it would be political suicide to align with Trump because Trump was just a dead man walking. And why give up an opportunity to walk into the White House, letting the system take Trump out and be the Trump alternative? Uh, you know, Paul Ryan couldn't keep his mouth shut about this in D.C., and that's part of what Trump heard. 
I didn't trust that Ryan is a reliable source, but now it looks like that is in fact what is transpiring. Now my view, as I've said, is George Soros came out and said openly, openly a month ago, uh, the goal was to get DeSantis to challenge Trump to take them both out. I think deep state actors concluded that their recruited candidate DeSantis was unreliable, that his pragmatism could lead him in their in his own direction. Much, by the way, as they ultimately feared Wallace. And, you know, the George Corley Wallace assassination is a subject of a future hush-hush. But they always thought Wallace's pragmatism could be used against deep state ambitions. And, they, and DeSantis proved that during his governorship, willing to at least potentially buck a company like Disney and willing to buck Big Pharma, willing to buck the FDA, willing to buck Anthony Fauci, willing to buck the World Economic Forum, I think proved to certain deep state actors that his pragmatism was would overcome uh, anything and to such a degree that he would align with populist causes rather than institutional interest when it served that pragmatism. So the goal became how to take out both DeSantis and Trump. They needed to pit them against one another. And the and what is you know Trump's great weakness and vulnerability, uh, both his virtue and his vice, is his ego. Uh, his ego lets him take a stand and keep to it when the whole world is up against it, and he's yet he's right. Also, was the temptation they used to get him to push the vaccines? Only you, Trump, could produce the salvation for millions of people around America and the world. Only you, Trump, could cut through the bureaucratic tape and get that vaccine out there. It was a seductive pitch, and they played on his ego to sucker him into it. With uh, DeSantis, his vulnerability is quite apparently his ambition. His ambition also a virtue and vice. His ambition can drive political pragmatism that embrace populist causes when it serves his advancement, but it can also derail those populist efforts and positive efforts when it leads to deep state alignment, as it did throughout his congressional career and really before his congressional career as well, in the military and in the government. Um, uh, the, and it could derail it again by getting him to mistakenly and foolishly challenge Trump. The reason is even if he beats Trump in the primaries, as Richard Barris's polling is now proving, beating Trump is what ultimately would kill DeSantis. If he actually beat him, there would be a group of Trump voters that would permanently hate him and never vote for him. And he has to get those votes in order to win. The, the naivete out there, I see these people that pretend, like these people were sending me this article saying, look at Town Hall, it says only DeSantis can win. And the article is as dumb as it gets. One of the main premises the article says, the giveaway that the author of the article is an idiot, he says, Ohio and Iowa are totally safe for, public, for any generic Republican. Uh, Really? Why don't you tell me you have absolutely no clue about American politics in one single sentence? That's what that person did. Uh, flashback to try to check how often Iowa, since the 1960s, going all the way back, has been more Republican than the country without Trump on the presidential ballot. Good luck with that. Uh, same with Ohio, by the way. So, uh, you know, the idea that these are, I mean, Ohio 2022, Republicans lost House seats. So the J.D. Vance won because he tracked Trump and ran on a Trumpish ballot and ticket. The reality is anybody who thinks that Trump is not the answer for 2024 needs a Trump-ish candidate on war and trade. And that candidate doesn't exist right now. And uh, the people are just pretending that DeSantis would magically get all these working-class northern and western non-evangelical voters. I thought that at least enough of them would turn out to stem the bleeding in 2018 and to help tip it in 2022, and I was wrong. Those voters have not voted Republican unless Trump was at the top of the ticket. A whole bunch of them. And you go all the way back, they haven't been voting Republican hardly at all. After 9-11, things like that, you know, that's about it. So the idea you're, that some generic Republican is going to win those voters in places like Ohio and Iowa tells me that's someone who has absolutely no clue at all about what those voters think. Um, and, and also when people tell me, why would you think DeSantis is kind of like Bush or Romney? Think from the perspective of a working class, non-evangelical voter. What does DeSantis look like? Does this voter care about crime on a federal policy perspective? Obviously not. Do they care about wokeism on a federal policy perspective? 
Obviously not. These are people who care about war, trade, the economy, and basic security, things like Social Security, Medicare, basic access to basic benefit programs that have a safety net and that have the economy doing well and don't have their jobs being shipped overseas or their kids being shipped overseas. That, that's their priorities, has been for a long time. Many of them gave up on Republicans completely after Bush's debacle of a second term, and many of them didn't trust Obama and just have stayed home like they did in 2012. The disappearing voter was one of the theories behind which, for which there was substantial evidence why Obama was able to get reelected in 2012, despite a lot of disapproval amongst those same voters. So uh, I think what it to, you know, yesterday I was very critical of DeSantis, not on moral grounds or even on policy grounds. Uh, some people misunderstood that. Being critical of DeSantis for being a moron. Because if when your entire benefit of who you are is that you're driven by pragmatism, and I think that best explains DeSantis's past and best predicts his short-term uh, behavior, uh, then you, the one thing you have to have is political IQ. And if you don't, you're useless. And that was my point. He had proven he was useless, utterly unreliable, more unreliable than Trump. Uh, the, you know, the idea, well, he, I can, he says, yeah, I can pick good personnel. Not a lot of evidence of that outside of Surgeon General. <laughs> that's one, that's one pick. So the, uh, not a lot of evidence. When I ask people, tell me about DeSantis's economic policy in the state of Florida. Most people can't tell me. His biggest fans can't tell me. If Florida backers can't tell me. That should tell you something. So, uh, and this is a guy I remember who outside the pandemic did, had you ever heard his name? And ask yourself, if, if it, you just wanted to go to an event for entertainment, and that's it, would you go to a DeSantis event? Hello, everybody. Welcome, everybody. The dude is as boring as it gets. He's the boring DeSantis. Just this. Just his. There's nothing about, like, Will Chamberlain's like, oh, man, the debates with him and Trump will be lit. No, they won't. Trump will smack him around. And mostly DeSantis is just boring. So, uh, but I think what I, you know, these explanations in my understanding was sure was confirmed today, though. For all the people who are bashing, oh, Barnes, you've jumped the gun. He's not doing anything dumb. And he wouldn't use Trump's indictment as the reasons to say he now should run for president and attack Trump, right? He wouldn't do that. It was just one little aside comment. And what does he do? He goes to Rupert Murdoch's boy uh, and does an exclusive interview in which the Fox headline is DeSantis comes after Trump and attacks Trump personally, which is fine to attack Trump personally. Just now is the wrong time. And this tells me he's been convinced that the indictment of Trump, the impending indictment and criminal troubles of Trump, is his path to the presidency. It's why he decided to back out of a deal of running on the ticket, abandon the plan to be the key Trump ally in 2024, and instead be the Trump adversary because he thinks Trump is DOA in 2024 because of the indictment. He sees the indictment as his opportunity to be the next president of the United States. And I was, and my point on Sunday was that means he's politically a imbecile and his advertisers, uh, his advisors are idiots. And, you know, the fact he followed up and compounded his mistake, pretty darn good proof of that, that my hypothesis about who he is, what he is, and what motivated him to run is true. Um, so that's uh, my take on uh, DeSantis.